Hi everyone, Dutch Reefer here. Welcome to this new episode of Focus Friday. Since the tank has been running for about a month now, I feel uh, comfortable enough to show you uh, my corals a little bit more up close, since they have uh, recovered quite a bit uh, since the, the tank migration. Uh, some of them struggled quite a bit, some of them are still struggling, but then again it's good to, uh, to show you, so you can... Uh, so you can see how they how they how they're doing, and perhaps uh, learn something new. So before getting into the corals, I want to give you a very small update regarding one of my fish. Um, as you can see, one of my fish is missing, um, and the reason for that is that it uh, it has died, unfortunately, and that's the uh, the spotted drum, so the Equatus punctatus. Uh, I was very sad to uh, to find it dead. And the reason is also pretty silly. Uh, last week I told you that I made a, a net, a cover, on top of uh, on the top of my tank to prevent fish from jumping out, which works fine. Except what I also told you is that this last little part was not yet covered up. As you can see right here, there are two squares of about eight to ten centimeters on each side of the tank. It's here as well. It was not covered up. I thought, let's do it this weekend. And then I uh, came home Saturday morning. And then uh, apparently the spotted drum had jumped out one of these holes onto the cover. And it, uh, well, you can guess what happened then. It ended up here, ended up here, and then it uh, died right here. So, unfortunately, I found uh, the fish completely dried up. Uh, on top of the uh, tank cover so that was not a very nice thing to happen and uh, of course I could have prevented it by um, making the net a little bit earlier or at least the the large, last part of acrylic that I've uh, added next to the tank cover but I didn't so uh, yeah pretty sad to see it go and uh, not sure yet on uh, how to replace it I haven't really thought about it yet, but uh, well, let's see how it goes. You might see, ah, there, the tank is already switching colors. So that's a really peculiar thing about this camera, is that sometimes the color looks pretty realistic, and then all other times it switches to a little more blue. So as you can see, the first two and a half minutes of this video, it looked a little bit more like it looks in real life. And now the camera has decided that it will show somewhere, somewhat more blue again. So we'll have to uh, do, uh, make do with that. So let's start off with the zoanthus on this side. These have actually been doing very well. So as you can see, they're uh, opened up really nicely. Um, same for these goniopora, especially the purple one is having a great time in the new tank. Uh, so these have been doing uh, rather great. Same goes for this uh, elegance coral. Uh, ever since I've placed it here, it has been uh, doing great and uh, looking fine. One of the corals I took off the back of the tank was this uh, Cephastrea. So as you can see, it's a bright green Cephastrea. And um, since it was attached to the back of the tank, I had to uh, get it off there, which was actually pretty easy using a spatula. So uh, I used the spatula to uh, remove it, and that worked out uh, wonderfully well. It came off in one piece, but unfortunately it's a bit hard to reattach, since m the back of my tank is now a lot smaller, and since there's only this, and I've already attached the uh, green star polyp on that. So still deciding what to do, not sure yet. Another coral that has been... Uh, Struggling a bit is this uh, Milipora, which was actually uh, pink and green when I moved it, and now it's uh, brown mainly and a little bit of green. So this still has to adapt to the new tank, as you can see clearly. Um, moving on, the Gorgonians are doing pretty well. Here's one uh, right here that has uh, been uh, waving since day one. And uh, as you can see, that's what this coral uh, likes a lot. So these uh, uh, leathery gorgonians are uh, 
These are pretty easy to keep and uh, they appreciate a lot of flow and when you give it to them they will uh, show their gratitude by showing their polyps extending a lot as you can see right here. Also my uh, Stylophora has been doing uh, great ever since the migration and the crab, the emerald crab that's in there is actually now most of the time underneath it well before it used to be uh, mainly inside the coral now it's uh, yeah it has uh, taken the base as its new uh, refuge so these goniopora's have also been doing quite well as I showed you before with the other one so same for this red one uh, not extending as much as it did in the previous tank yet but nevertheless it has been uh, doing good and uh, that's always nice to see same goes for the uh, the recordea some more zoanthus over here some more recordea this one has been struggling a bit it also got quite damaged while doing uh, the move uh, so this uh, echinophilia if I'm right has, uh, has broken off a few pieces and then again it's also being uh, harassed sometimes by the angelfish right here so this angelfish likes to take a nip now and then of this coral which it has been doing ever since, uh, well, since since week two or something since I had this fish so it can handle it but of course it's always better if they don't but they do also the Duncan which has been retracted for well, I think about one and a half or two weeks, so I was quite concerned that this would not recover well, but luckily it did. And then it's still next to the, uh, yeah, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful Goniopora that I've uh, ever seen or had. It's just one color, but a very nice color. And also the uh, polyp expansion is uh, slowly uh, increasing again. So in the first few days it was just showing a centimeter and now it's already uh, going back to uh, to a lot longer polyps, about 8 to 10 centimeters. So another coral that has been struggling quite a bit is this previously bright green Cinularia dura, if I'm correct. Um, it has been covered in algae basically since day one. It was already it was shedding when I moved it and it hasn't really been able to uh, shed off its old skin yet. I've used, tried once using a toothbrush, but apparently it didn't appreciate it that much, so I uh, I quit doing that. If you look closely, you'll also see that uh, I also have somewhat of a plague uh, anemone in my, uh, in my tank, as you can see right here. These are uh, are to be removed not quite sure what the uh, what the name is in English but these need to be uh, eliminated with Joe's Juice or Octasia X same for this Ricordea also a very beautiful orange one which has uh, survived wonderfully well this Goniopora which had been in decline for quite a few weeks before I moved and now in the new tank it starts to do a little bit better so I'm actually surprised that this coral has been doing better in this tank than in my previous one, so that's also good. Of course for every coral that's been doing less good, it's also nice to have one that's doing better. Then this new Caliantrium, which I uh, got from the previous owner of this tank. So I got the tank together with uh, two pieces of coral and a lot of live rock. So this is one of the corals that I uh, got from uh, from this man. and. Uh, yeah, since I like the color a lot, I was pretty happy that I got it. And uh, it has been in my tank since day one. And it's looking pretty happy. So same for uh, for the, like the Gorgonian I showed you over here. Uh, another one that I moved is uh, this one. This is also a, a leathery Gorgonian, so uh, one that uh, uses photosynthesis to uh, uh, to live. Unfortunately that's where my uh, 
So unfortunately, that's where the uh, gimbal stopped working and uh, the camera stopped filming since I reached the 10 minute limit. I still want to finish the round of corals that we're doing, so this one uh, video will be a few minutes longer. Um, I hope you don't mind. So I like explain this coral also lives on photosynthesis like a lot of leathery corals and uh, whilst in the first few days it lost some of its uh, polyps or branches as you can still see right here and here if you take a close look uh, it's uh, recovering wonderfully well and uh, doing great ever since. The uh, clownfish are still hosting their uh, euphilias as they did before. Uh, glad to see that they uh, they didn't have an issue uh, migrating from tank to tank, and still uh, recognize their uh, their old homes. And uh, well, glad to see that they are still in there. A coral that has been uh, a bit in decline is this Montipora. Um, I've seen it recover over the fa past week, so that's great, but it's still not back into the right color yet, so it's still a little bit more brown than uh, red, and it used, it used to be a little more bright red, which I'm sure it will be again once the tank stabilizes a little further. So a quick view of this green Montipora, which has also recovered wonderfully well even after the Montipora eating nudie branch in my previous tank this one was not affected by it happily so the Colastrea has also uh, shown uh, great polyp expansion since the move and uh, oh unfortunately the Montipora hirsuta that you can see right here it's just a small frag of the huge colony that I had before somehow the the mother colony died so after the migration this is actually a pretty easy coral to keep, but yeah, sometimes these things work in mysterious ways. Uh, it was a bit on the bottom of the tank and somehow the tissue just started reclining and never really recovered. So that's why I uh, broke off this piece, which uh, seems to be uh, well doing at least uh, okay ever since. So at least I was able to recover a piece. The last coral that I'm going to show you today is uh, this a Gorgonian. Um, like the previous two large ones that I showed you, this one is also photosynthetic. It's also a little bit less intriguing, so the color is mainly brown. Uh, but still, this is also this is the second coral that I got from the previous owner. Uh, so of course, you can not look a happy uh, a given <laughs> coral in the in the mouth, as we Dutch would say. Um, and I'm pretty pleased to see that the two Cardanius are actually. Uh, uh, considering this their, their main base of operation so uh, yeah great to have this coral and see that this Cardarini are uh, enjoying this uh, this spot to uh, to hang out so I'll definitely keep this coral as well uh, yeah just as a reminder that I got a awesome tank from the previous owner and that he gave me these two corals as well so that's it that's the round of corals that I wanted to do with you today I hope uh, you liked the video, I hope I like, you liked what you saw. I try to be as honest as possible about uh, everything that happens in the tank after a big migration like this. Of course it's uh, quite something to move from a 500 liter tank, 140 gallons, to a 1200 liter tank which is about uh, 320 gallons. So it's a quite, quite a big upgrade. Had to add quite a bit of new live rock, add new water. Um, add some more sand so yeah well the balance is all messed up from day one and even uh, though uh, it is and you know beforehand it's always great to see that the tank is uh, recovering as much as it is so um, I'm very grateful that this uh, this has happened and uh, yeah well of course it's great as well so I can uh, continue my video series with you and uh, yeah well that's it for this week so, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you have a nice weekend, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye-bye.